Well, what kind of marksman do we have? Like, what if we are... What if we're Twitch? Right? If we're Twitch, we're a Hurricane user. We hit a lot of enemy champions. Feels pretty good. We've got some spells. They're physical damage based. Well, Thunder Lords is okay. Storm Raider Surge. Actually feels pretty good, to be honest. That's a lot of kiting power. We know we're going to trigger it. And to be honest, I haven't played a Storm Raider Surge Marksman. And I really want to. After I'm done talking about Masteries, I'm going to play some games and, and play like Storm Raiders Twitch and see what happens. Because that feels pretty cool. But the thing is... I'm playing Twitch, and I want to hurricane some bitches and expunge them. And that's what Fervor of Battle does. Every auto attack I land, hitting champions with every hurricane bolt and every shot of spray and pray, it's going to stack real fast, and I'm going to get, you know, 30 attack damage by mid game, which is 30 attack damage. It's a good amount of attack damage. Um, so I probably want to go Fervor. I'm happy to try Storm Raider Surge, but, you know. I am a, a marksman who has physical damage scaling abilities that I care about. I'm going to like going fervor. Well, I'm Twitch, so I want attack speed. Um, Feast versus Fresh Blood is a tough choice, but the problem is Twitch's landing phase is hard. So you want the Feast regen. Similarly, you want the Vampirism lifesteal. The nice thing about Twitch is you're not doing all your big damage until at the end of the fight. Because you're auto-attacking for a while, building up, and then using Expunge, or Contaminate as it's called. So Battle Trance actually lines up with what you want to do anyway. And yeah, your, your opening auto-attacks don't do the extra damage, but by the time you're using your execution abilities, Battle Trance is pretty much stacked up. Battle Trance is real good on Marksmen. They're going to take long fights anyway. Unfortunately, the, now the one downside is as you turn on spray and pray its duration is roughly battle trances so your arguably your biggest damage ability is using spray and pray and well that's not going to stack up you know you're, you're not going to get the full benefit of, of battle trance while using spray and pray which means maybe you go bounty hunter and that is reasonable to look at i mean as a twitch you're going to be assassinating in fact as twitch you are very likely to get the last hits thanks to contaminate and even thanks to your passive and there's a legitimate case for going Bounty Hunter instead on Twitch. And, and the more I think about it, the more I kind of like it. I think Battle Trance is very close. I would never go Double-Edged Sword on a Marksman. At least not on a, an auto-attack based one who, who needs, who's going to be in range of things because you'll just get killed and there's other benefits. But maybe we'll go Bounty Hunter. That feels pretty good. Obviously, Battering Blows. We're Physical Damage Dealer. And yeah, we're going to go Fervor of Battle, I think. Uh, Warlords Bloodlust could be used. It's not bad, but Stacking up Fervor just feels really good. Actually, another synergy, by the way, Fervor of Battle and Battle Trance. Um, this stacks up to more and more attack damage, and by the time you've stacked up all of your stacks, Battle Trance is in full swing. So by the time you've got your 5% damage amp, you've also got your 20 to 30 attack damage, to f up to 60 attack damage by the end of the game. And now you're insane! You've got 60 attack damage and a 5% damage amp, 5 seconds into a team fight, and you're just going to blast people. Someone in chat asks, what does the unique qualifier mean in Bounty Hunter? What's the max cap? 7.5%. Once you've killed Zed in that game, killing him again will not buff Bounty Hunter. But if you've killed Zed and Nami and Alistair, let's say it's Jungle Alistair, you're at 4.5% damage amp. And that is 4.5% 4, 4 damage amp to every target. That is 4.5% to everything. Jungle monsters, minions, Baron Nasher, other champions, you name it. So it means nothing until you get a kill. And if you are not last hitting champions, this literally does nothing for you at all. If you do not last hit, you are getting zero from this mastery. Whereas Battle Trance would always do something. So there is some level of risk involved. If you are losing, you're going to lose hard. But that said, if you're in a game where you're zero and three... Well, one, this wasn't going to help you anyway. And two you probably weren't going to be not 1-3 because of Battle Trance. So don't, don't take that condition as too big of a weakness. 
right? The, the way to think about the value of masteries is there's only some set of games where my mastery choices and mastery optimizations really mattered, right? There's going to be a lot of games that I could have won even without bringing mastery because we won so hard anyway. There's going to be a lot of games that I'm going to lose no matter how well I played because I, I just couldn't carry a game this well, right? It's like if you're a gold four eighty carry and you're in a gold four game, yeah, if, if you were literally SKT bang, you could have carried, but you're not. And you just, you're just not good enough to have won that game. Your top lane lost, mid they didn't go so well, and you got ganked at level four. You know, sucks. Yeah, if you were a better player, you wouldn't have gotten ganked, and if you were a better player, you would have gotten that first blood. But that wasn't because you went bounty hunter, you know? Um, and so there's games on either side where it never was going to matter. So what you have to think about is the games where you're, my mastery choices do matter, you know, games we're trading back and forth and it's close, what optimization will win me those games? And I think Bounty Hunter makes sense for Twitch. Um, be specifically because after two kills, it's on when you open up with Spray and Pray. And that's the primary reason why I bring that up is, is you're going to open up a lot of team fights with your most important ability, which is your ultimate, and you kind of want to have the damage amp for it. I think it's very close. I think it's very debatable. And we'll see this change. Um, specifically in pro play, I don't expect to see Bounty Hunter much because pros get much, many less kills. Pros die much less. I would not expect to see Bounty Hunter in professional play unless they're specifically playing Assassins. Okay, so we are playing Twitch or some other attack damage caster based marksman. Um, wonderful. You know, with a weak landing phase because we're going feast. So, for example, if we were playing an attack damage based caster like Ezreal, we'd maybe do Fresh Blood, but we're not. Um, we're playing Twitch. Okay, well, what else do we want? Well, um, I mean, we can do regen and better summoner spells, and to be fair, that's not the worst. I mean, if my laning phase sucks and I'm playing Twitch and I just do this, like, well, I survived the lane quite a bit better. Heck, I even have lower cooldowns on my summoners. Like, that's pretty good. It's not objectively wrong, really, right? And keep in mind, okay, well, I last hit better. Well, that's useful. Okay, I have more potions, and to be fair... Again, this is, I'm walking in the lane with a Doran's Blade and one potion. This is 60 health. Sorry, sorry, 30 health. This is 30 health. This is 30 health after two and a half minutes. No, this is 30 health after like just over a minute. Like recovery blasts secret stash in terms of regen. Keep that in mind. But Savagery helps me last hit and that's relevant. Um, I'm going to do a lane. Assassin's no good. I'm not going to get buffs. We're going to get affinities no good. Merciless. Very good on Twitch. I'm going to try to assassinate with my E. Okay, and then, you know, Greenfather's Gift, you know, could be good, right? I could, I could, you know, queue through the lane and then try to open up on somebody, get some damage on them. This could be very good. Um, Dangerous Game could be very good as well, but, you know, this feels pretty good. And, you know, I think it's debatable. Dangerous Game can be great, but, you know, I want to experiment. I want to see how well this works. I'd love to see how much I can get with Greenfather's Gift. And, you know, let's see if I can get something out of that. What's nice, actually... Um, you don't even have to harass champions to do it. If you need to push your lane in, uh, again, if you're under your turret, you're getting nothing for this, but if you just want to push your lane, um, you know, walk into the brush, auto attack, walk into the brush, auto attack, every nine seconds, you get a little bit more damage to knock down minions with. Doesn't seem too bad. And this feels like a pretty good Twitch mastery page. Okay, well, what if we're playing, and specifically this is actually, I'm just going to name it because it's vain. Um... Right, what kind of champion wants Warlord's Bloodlust? Vayne does. Now keep in mind, think about the several types of marksmen we're playing. And this is my home role, so I can talk about them a lot. Well, you've got spell-based poke, like Jace and Varus. And yes, Jace and Varus will go to Fire Touch. You've got sort of in-battle caster types, which are, you know, like Twitch, for example. You've got the very bursty guys. Corky's a good example of this. Or he's hybrid damage. He's practically a mage. So Thunderlord's Decree. I think Ezreal could live here safely as well. Um, and then you've got people that are a bit more like duelists. That are going to find themselves in one-on-ones. And they really just want to auto-attack you. And they really, really want to get efficient item builds. Because if they don't have to buy lifesteal, they can buy another zeal item. Not having to go for a Bloodthirster is really nice. Now, 
Now what's interesting is Fervor of Battle, for example, is not that great on Sivir. Because Sivir needs to land specifically basic attacks on you to stack Fervor. That's not how Sivir plays, really. That's not really what she does. Um, she just kind of hits whatever she can. It turns out that she is, uses Vorlaz Bloodless because of that. Because she's just not going to stack it. And okay, maybe she gets some value out of Storm Raiders. Maybe she gets some value out of Thunder Lords. You know, there's, there's stuff here. Her key for Death Fire type is probably not good enough, to be honest. But, you know, if you're just more like a duelist, if you're just kind of, if you're just auto-attacking and you just want to fish in auto-attacks, Warlord's Bloodlust is the keystone for you. You say, okay, we're going Ferocity, obviously, and I'm an auto-attacker, so there's that. Okay, well, how crappy is my landing phase? Well, I'm vain, so it's bad, so feast. But, you know, fresh blood's good, too, because I want to... I might poke enemy champions once in a while, you know, tumble in for a couple auto-attacks. I think this is debatable. Still going to go vampirism, probably, but... You know, if you think Warlord's Blood is going to be good enough for you, maybe... Okay, once again, you know, do I go Bounty Hunter? Do I go Double Edged Sword? The answer is no. Uh, or do I go Battle Trance? And, you know, if you're playing Vayne or you're playing Caitlyn, you're almost less likely to get those cheeky kills than if you were playing Twitch. You're almost less likely to, to get value out of Bounty Hunter. I mean, it, it's kind of true and it's kind of not. Like, Vayne probably makes a good use out of Bounty Hunter. Caitlyn is probably harder to get them with because she can't chase her kills down or easily duel people. Um, I think if you're playing Caitlyn specifically, I think it's Battle Trance 100% of the time. Because that fight's going to last more than 5 seconds. If you're playing Vayne, I mean, a lot of it doesn't matter because half your damage is true damage regardless. Not half. A f fifth of your damage is true damage regardless. And it's not going to affect it in any way. But, you know, you're probably going to be in a longer term battle and Battle Trance makes sense. You know, maybe you get Bounty Hunter. I don't know. It's debatable. Really, either one's good. We'll go Battle Trance because it looks cool. Obviously, Arm Penetration, and now we have Warlord's Bloodlust, and this makes me a good duelist. Now I'm fighting you one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm life-stealing and ramping up my damage with Battle Trance. So if you don't one-shot me, we're really going to go for this. And keep in mind, like, you know, my tough fights as Vayne is like, ooh, there's a Darius or a Maokai or something, which is, you know, going to take me a while to kill. I've got to outplay him for a little bit. I'm going to life-steal with Warlord's Bloodlust, and I'm going to get my damage amped up, and we're going to go for this. And, you know, maybe you go Bounty Hunter, right? Like, it's it's debatable. Okay, well, what do you want alongside the vein? Well, okay, you know, Insight's cool. You know, we can do this stuff and survive the landing phase, and that's not really wrong, necessarily. You know, come around here and, and not get pushed out of lane. And, and, you know, there's very good reason to want this. Keep in mind, like, remember, you're running Warlord's Bloodlust. You've got uh, Feast. You've got Lifesteal here. You're going to get a lot of Lifesteal out of this Runic Armor. That's going to be effective for you, for sure. It's going to be nice. Um, and hey, you're playing Vayne, you're probably going to get pushed under your turret at some point. And, you know, this very well might be something that you want. And, and it's not really wrong to say so. Um, this this could be really good. Um, or, you know, you go hard, you do something like this. And, and you know, maybe it's Dangerous Game instead because you're going to want to play cleanup a bit more and survive in team fights a bit longer. And Dangerous Game is really nice for that. And you know, getting away from turret dives. Uh, as Vayne, you're very likely to be pushed into your turret, so you're not going to get to use Greenfather's Gift in the laning phase, so maybe we do something like this. But this, you know, this feels pretty appropriate for something like Vayne, where, you know, we're probably still going to go for these sort of safe regen tools and whatnot. But, I mean, keep in mind, like, you know, th the gains we're getting here at this point, right? We're getting Merciless, which is okay. You know, we're getting Dangerous Game, which is okay. I mean, Greenfather's Gift is pretty cool, to be completely fair. Um, you know... Secret Stash gets completely smashed by recovery. It's just, well, you're better at last hitting. And and realistically, you know, Vayne has Silver Bolts and Vayne has um, Tumble. And, and, you know, in a lot of cases, like, I feel like this is almost just better in terms of not getting pushed out of lane, you know? That I'm going to have better regen. I'm not going to get poked down as much when I'm shoved in. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heal up better. Like, this is significantly better sustain. And, and the more I think about it, the more it feels like this fits... You know, vain against similarly skilled opponents much better. Uh, taking a quick break, Rowdy Z says, Freak, you'll stream more if you could have a subscriber button, right? It, 
my streaming is actually like the the frequency of my streaming is not really directly related to how much I can monetize it. It's it's never been about that for me. I mean, I've I've streamed for six to seven years for free, and I've always enjoyed it because I like doing it. it yes, if I, you know, sure, money's nice, obviously. Like, let's be real, you know, the option to have money, to not have money, people choose to have money. Um, but the reason I stream is because I like it. Like, I get a lot of fun and, and happiness out of doing things like this, having 2,600 viewers, and analyzing masteries because I love analysis. I love math and I love teaching and those all come together when I do a stream and talk about masteries. Um, and in fact, I spend more time thinking about what's the best way to have this content reach players in a way they can understand than how could I monetize content better? Um, I'm never happy with how I produce these videos because there's a lot of information to provide and I never feel like I can provide it succinctly enough. And I don't know the answer to that. And I think about it a lot and I still haven't come up with a good answer for it. Um, that's okay. Uh, and then let's go through, I'm basically just going to redo the pages that I have right now. AD carry Thunderlord. All right, an AD carry, a marksman that uses Thunderlords. Well, what is a champion that's going to use, what is a marksman that'll use Thunderlords? Well, it's Corky, maybe Ezreal. It's going to be a marksman, you know, like if I'm picking in my own role, right? It's going to be somebody who will get several hits off, so it's not a poke type champion, right? It's not Jace, it's not Varus. I mean, it can be Jace, Jace can get value. Um, especially if he's playing top lane Jace compared to mid lane Jace where he's facing Poppy and Rumble and things like that. Um, but it's someone who wants to be a little bit bursty. And, and again, my primary example of this is Corky. Um, we say, okay, well, we're a marksman. So we're doing these things. We probably do one point in meditation. Uh, Greenfather's Gift. Gain... One of the reasons I like a dangerous game is if you are a Thunderlords user, you're probably a spellcaster, which gives you double the value of dangerous game. So for example, if I'm playing a champion like Caitlyn, I don't really care about the mana restore in dangerous game. I'm Traps are very, very cheap. I'm not using Qs much in team fights. There's not a lot of value here for dangerous game. I'd rather just stand and brush and use Greenfather's Gift and poke the crap out of people. That's doable. If I'm playing Corky or maybe Ezreal, I care a lot about getting health back if I'm getting hit, and I'd certainly care a lot about getting mana back. Um, now, if I'm playing Ezreal, I'm probably going Greenfather's Gift, and I'm probably also going for Fresh Blood because I can, I can apply that. I can, I can land Mystic shots on people. Um, and keep in mind again, Greenfather's Gift works on ability, so Gatling Gun will immediately waste it on minions, and and as Corky, you're gonna have a hard time landing it. Um, you know, landing a Q or R without hitting a minion first, so we're probably going dangerous game on him, but yeah, if I was Ezreal, I'd probably do this. We're going to go dangerous game. We're, of course, going to go precision, and yes, we're going to go Thunderlords. And this is one of the very few times I will actually pick my keystone based on the mastery right before it, because this gives me armor and magic pen, and these only give me one of the two. Now, to be clear, Corky does, like, 75% magic damage. It's very skewed. Um... So it's not incredibly important that, you know, you get some armor penetration because it's just not that big of a deal. But it does exist. And, you know, it feels nice getting the hybrid pen from this. And and again, you're going to trigger Thunderlords. Your Gatling Gun's going to trigger it easily. You're going to weave in spells and auto attacks. You're going to trigger Thunderlords. It's not going to be hard. But you don't have enough raw attack damage for Deathfire Touch to matter. And you don't really have good enough AD ratios, nor is your real like auto attack speed that good to want fervor of battle. Um, you could argue that Warlord's Bloodlust makes sense on Corky, and that's not objectively wrong, but I think Thunderlords just makes more sense on him. And now we say, okay, well, you're Corky, your job is to do more damage. Do we want attack speed or abilities? And I'm going to say actually abilities. You're going to land a lot with rockets and Q and stuff. Okay, well, what's next? Well, 
Um, you know, Fresh Blood feels good because you're a Trinity Force user, and that means your sort of auto attack pattern is like land a spell, auto somebody back off. And this will fill, that fills right into that pattern, right? Your Trinity Force is going to do 200 damage. is going to do another 15 for you, another 25 for you. It's pretty good. Um, you know, there's some viability going to expose weakness because you're going to land poke on people, and, uh, you know, that'll, that'll help them a little. Um, you know, and Feast is always good. It's risk-averse, and it, and it gives you a bit of help. But, yeah, one of these is good. Either one is probably fine. Um, interestingly, you could choose to put more points in a natural talent as someone like Corky and less in a vampirism because you are so long-range, you're really not under threat very much. Uh, and, you know, you can make the choice. I think it's still safe to go vampirism and you know get your life steal and spell vamp up and the nice thing about corky is you have a lot of spell damage that feels good as as real you're going to get a lot of spell damage off as well but about those champions about these thunderlords marksmen you know you're you really care quite a bit about the, these ratios here right and like maybe you do something like this and you and you really risk the the lower sustain and, and again i want to i want to continue to say that this is and can be scary to not have it, but that's there. And then finally we say, okay, Battle Trance, Bounty Hunter, Double-Edged Sword, and, and none of these feel great, to be honest. None of them line up amazingly. Um, pros, again, are not going to use Bounty Hunter because you don't get enough kills in pro play. Double-Edged Sword is just too big of a liability as a marksman. And then Battle Trance, I mean, it's just what we're going to go for at that point, because why not? But um, I think in, in general, solo queue bounty hunter is fine because it'll be up all the time. Uh, Battle trance, it's it's weird because it can be good and it can be not good. It depends on how the game plays out. So, for example, for example, I'm Corky, and we are sieging or poking around the dragon pit, right? And I'm trying to land rockets, so you go away. And we get the dragon. I'm throwing rockets at you. Now the thing is, if my accuracy is really good, rocket number one lands, tick, tick. Rocket number two lands, tick, tick. Well, we just sat here playing poke wars and battle trance is fully stacked now. I'm at 5% bonus damage. Let's land a rocket. Let's land an auto attack. Let's go do stuff. What's interesting is Battle Trance is 5% increased damage, full stop, when in combat with enemy champions. So theoretically, I land rockets, and I can auto-attack a dragon for more damage. Now that's a stretch, it's not a very likely scenario, but it's technically available. If I'm able to land poke reliably, this is going to amp up for me. It's going to be very easy to use. But the other thought is... If I'm not landing poke constantly, I'm hitting you with a rocket at 0%, and it falls off, and hit you with another rocket with 0%. And even though I'm doing very similar things and I'm trying to play poke, I'm not really getting any gains from this keystone. And in that sense, Bounty Hunter is just exclusively better, because it can give me value. Additionally, in the Battle Trance thought, if you are landing the poke reliably, and they do come to engage on you, you know, you're doing like a level 7 dragon fight or something, and I land a rocket, and I land a rocket, and I Valkyrie away because Malphite flashed at me or something, well, I have fully stacked Battle Trance, and the battle's begun, and because I'm a poke champion, I'm already at 5%, and I'm ready to go, and, and I'm full power, and... The only time that this would be worse is if you had already had four unique champion kills, which is unlikely by early to mid game. By the time you've killed five unique enemy champions, you might have already won the game regardless, and the max case of Bounty Hunter is almost never going to influence a game you ever play. Like, do realize that, I talked about this earlier in the stream, just because the top end is something, that might never decide a game for you. Every game where Bounty Hunter could give you 7.5% bonus damage are games you probably already won. So why does it even need to give you that? Because you've already won anyway. This could do nothing and you'd still win the game. Whereas Battle Trance will always help you. And, and I want that to be sort of clear that Battle Trance will help you much more in games where you are losing to help make a comeback. And the more I kind of think about it, the more I think Battle Trance makes uh, quite a bit of sense.
All right, what about a Deathfire Touch AD carry? And in my mind, there are two. They are Jin and Misfortune. Now, why is that? Well, it's because they're champions who land spells infrequently. Now, Misfortune can use Thunderlords, to be fair. That's totally fine. It's useful for her. It's usable entirely. But Misfortune buys a lot, just like Jin, buys a lot of raw attack damage. And Deathfire Touch's attack damage ratio is insanely high. It's 60%. So if you have 200 bonus AD, which is, you know, okay, mid-game, you know, you're like level 12 or so, that's 120 bonus damage. And it happens to everybody that you hit. Anytime you hit them, always. Okay, and it's not always that full value, of course. If you hit make it random, they run away right away, you don't get the full value. Versus Thunder Lord's Decree, which of course you can use, and yeah, by mid game you get your thirty percent bonus attack damage ratio and you get a heft of your base damage. But Thunder Lord's Decree can go on cooldown a lot, and if you're playing Jin, it's just not gonna trigger because you just can't land enough spells in time. And if you're playing Misfortune, you can trigger it, but do you really care? Deathfire Touch, yeah. Mid Jace, um, mid Varus, probably even regular Varus. This is Jin, mid or AD carry, this is Misfortune. Uh, AD carry or support, I think, uh, to be honest. But these are any, basically the thought is any any spellcaster where their spells are landing few and far between, um, right? Basically poke mages. And, and again, I think a good example of that is Jace, Varus, Jin. Deathfire Touch is their keystone. Okay, we're going Deathfire Touch. Well, we're obviously going for the armor penetration and we're a poke mage, so clearly it's sorcery. And we're a poke mage, so we're not using fresh blood. And we're poking, so you know, this is debatable. Misfortune's kind of easy to push around in lane, and Jin can lifesteal a ton with his force shot, so Vampirism feels real great on him. Um, and Varus, I think, wants to sustain to not get pushed out of lane, to be honest. Then we say, okay, we're a poke mage, and unlike Corky, we're not going to land it nearly as frequently. And Battle Trance is not useful. We're pretty much forced to go Bounty Hunter because we're still not going Double-Edged Sword. I think this is a liability when you've got reasonably good options elsewhere. And to, to be fair, actually, I am more amenable to this if you're actually playing specifically Jin, specifically Jay, specifically mid Varus, because they are out of range so much and it's hard to get 5% bonus damage otherwise. Misfortune, not a chance. Like, don't you dare. Um, support Misfortune, also risky. Because Misfortune can get some pretty good use out of Battle Trance, to be fair, right? She's going to, like, cast E, cast R, and over time, you know, that damage is going to ramp up anyway, and it's not going to be nearly as painful for her. Um, up to choice still, of course, a little bit, but... You know, let's just go Bounty Hunter because it's a safe enough bet right now. Armor Pen, obviously, and Deathfire Touch, obviously. Okay, well, Mr. Poke, well, you're going to get Savagery. You're still going to go Secret Stash. Now, the funny thing is, Merciless is almost entirely useless. You're a Poke Mage. Now, okay, Jin cares, and maybe Jin will get this because Jin's going to smash low health people. He wants to target them, and, and Jin plays a bit differently. Um, but... If you're playing, like, Varus, and you're not getting a tier, or even if you are getting a tier, Meditation's real good. Real good. Maybe if you're playing Jin, you do this. You do four points Merciless, which is pretty good, and then you get just the one in Meditation because it'll help. Um, but it really depends what you're playing, right? If you're playing Jin, it's this. If you're playing Jace, it's maybe this. And that's debatable because Jace has follow-up. If Jace lands enough poke, he'll flash and then melee Q you and go in. And so there's there's a lot more room for debate here. But like, yeah, Varus, you're just that. Misfortune? 
I kind of like meditation on misfortune, to be honest. Because did you know, misfortune's double up triggers Deathfire Touch, and it triggers it for the full duration, I'm almost certain. I am almost certain you get the full four seconds of Deathfire Touch with Misfortune Q. That's real good. That's real, real good. And having infinite mana makes you awesome. And then we say, okay, well, Green Father's Gift. Well, I'm not going to land auto attacks. Okay, Bandit. Well, I'm not going to land auto attacks. So, okay, we're just going to have a dangerous game. And it's, you know, it's whatever, right? But I basically, you know, got a bunch of mana regen for going down in a cunning. And that's pretty good. And I, I mean, again, you know, some champions will use Merciless, right? Jace and Jin are, are primary examples of this, but. It's based on what you're going to play, and you just have to make sure you 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 know switch that mastery properly if that's what's happening with you.